Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold. And we're zoomed way out, so that means yes, it's time for another status update on how everything's going on in the rest of the game world. We can see that uh, there's been a lot of pushing back and forth. It looks like the Russians have really pushed severely into the French, like, homeland. Lor <clears throat> Excuse me, Lorient is way, way, way behind enemy lines now at this point. And there's also this 5 pocket, 5x five pocket here that I suspect actually contains a French force that's cut off because that seems like a lot of area, blank area to be um, controlled by the French without there actually being a unit in there. But we, we have no way of knowing that. It's just a guess. Um, the oil and the raw in the north have both been captured, which is presumably why the French are so ambitious about trying to hold down the raw and the oil over here. Um, although I don't have any problem with them holding those for the time being. I suspect we'll never need any more raw than what we have producing right now. And although we will start occurring some, we will start generating some oil burning units, um, 3,000 should be sufficient for a little while and we should be able to capture this oil and our other oil back in fairly short order. At, at least I hope, that's the game plan. Okay, so what else is going on? The Germans made a pretty strong push over here, that's right, in the far south, but with these little strike like little forces little strips in here i think it's a russian advance or counter advance i don't know what you would call it because i doubt that these single width hexes would be generated by the attacking unit the attacking unit usually has this like three hex wide thing that happens because as you move in if the enemy doesn't have any uh units in the area you capture every the hex and then every hex around you so if the russian unit moved like this and then, hmm, you know, there there would be some forces here to get this weird design. But usually, um, if you see multiple hexes, a multiple hex width path, that's the actual path the unit is taking. And this single width one is just a, a product of one of the nations pushing in. Now, that's not necessarily 100% true because the Germans could actually have units here. And then the Russians could have units here, which would cause this same um, dynamic. Anyway, uh, we can also see if I am able to zoom in. A little bit more that most of the nations the ai nations have built a lot of factories we have gun factory tank factory um the russians have airplane factory which from my experience they don't end up using because the research for planes appears to be pretty low on their priority list or pretty far down on their um sad to say i think it is a static research path i haven't seen any diversity as of yet it seems like they always go armored car and then infantry gun, or vice versa, actually. Infantry gun, then armored car. And that should mean that next is infantry gun two, and I don't know what they do beyond that. So we see another gun factory here, two of them, an airplane factory, again, will probably be unused for most of the game, and another tank factory here, which is generally how these AIs are producing so many armored cars. And which is also, excuse me, the reason why I don't care about killing their armored cars. You have to do it, it's true, but they're kind of free units because after you expend your political points, the 80 political points you need to build a factory, just like we've done here, um, they just produce units for free. There's no cost, um, besides the raw and besides the oil that it costs to run the units that you're building, but they don't, co they don't cost any of your production points. Um, you get this 8,000 point production spot. Um, it generates this 8,000 points forever, for free after just the initial investment of 80 political points, which yes, makes factories a very, very strong strategic move, which is why we will probably also be building them. Okay, so I think if I zoom out one more time, I think that covers everything I wanted to say. Um, so let's go ahead and turn off hex coloring and jump into our narrow view of the world, which is uh, most of this. Now I have done a few things. I activated Daryl Max um, officer, what is this, his, uh, reconnaissance thing just to see if it would affect anything and it did i was able to get better reconnaissance for the yellow and the red but i guess it doesn't affect his units so his units themselves don't have better reconnaissance which is fine i mean i'm i'm okay with this but um i i was a little surprised so this unit when it says affect i mean this intelligence operation thing it affects subordinate headquarters only now i i'm planning on eventually building another headquarters in the south, calling that one the Southern HQ, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Now, um, Daryl Max combat and morale stats are not exceptional. I would say, yeah, they're less than exceptional. 
most of my units are usually above 25. You usually get above 25 for these. 25 is probably about the, maybe 28 is the average. So, oh, I mean, these units have leveled up quite a few times too, so that doesn't, these are not normalized. 43, I've never seen that for a starting unit. Maybe I've never even seen 37. So John Newton's pretty strong up there. Unfortunately, all he has is Blitz, which is not super useful quite yet, but that brings me to my last point, which, where's my engineer? Right here. I've decided instead of building my dive bomber, I'm going to go ahead and build armor. And it took a little while for me to come to this conclusion off camera. The main factor in this is that actually light tanks will be better against armor, against their armored cars than um, my dive bombers. How did I come to that conclusion? Just very simple analysis. If I go to combat stats, I'm gonna compare with standard light tank, which is um, what I will be building first. And we can see that the, against armor, it's 1200 to 800. Now, obviously it will fight against a unit which can, can fight back. So it can fight back at 450 and 300, but you can see that generally standard light tanks just destroy armored cars in a head-to-head -head engagement. You need about three, maybe even more um, armored cars to defeat one single light tank generally, especially if the light tanks are attacking. So if the light tanks are attacking, it's probably more like four to one. Well, it's in between three and four to one. Anyway, uh, that's quite a few armored cars and the standard light tanks usually are gonna attack with um, some kind of support, just gonna help out even better. Um, that being said, our light tanks are not even that bad defending against other armor. So they, they, they're a pretty good stopgap. I've been using anti-tank guns, but I'll, I'll probably end up slowing down my anti-tank production, maybe just to one or two per infantry unit, because there's still gonna be places where I want uh, my infantry that I don't want my armor, but I want my infantry to have anti-tank capability. So we'll, we'll keep producing anti-tank weapons for a little bit. It's nice to have a little diversity. It's fun for like the viewers, I feel. Like it's better from a video standpoint. From the min-max standpoint, if I could have eliminated my need to spend the 80 political points on anti-tank guns, it definitely would have been optimal, but <laughs> that's all right. It is much more fun to see a diversity of units, which is a compelling reason for me to turn off the Stone Age start or the, the um, expensive research. Anyway, so why is this better than the dive bombers? Well, you just compare this 1200-800 with what the dive bombers do. Um, every time I click on this screen, you can't see it right now, but I'm in a different window that pops up, which actually allows me to select the units. And now we see the dive bombers. So the dive bombers do 900-600. Well, 600 doesn't matter, they won't be defending, but they do 900 versus 1200. So that means I do get an attack for free, that's the upside, and the dive bombers, there is a, um, an interesting mechanic I'd have to worry about range. Whereas the light tanks, I just need to move them into the correct positions and they need to have the number of action points necessary to, to dive bomb. Um, for dive bombers, I mean for the light tanks just to attack, but the, for the dive bombers, they have to be positioned in a city. So for example, London, and they can move from there five spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. They have this range five hexes away in every direction from the city that they're stationed in where they can dive bomb. Um, so there's another reason why I chose not to go with dive bombers though, and that is because, um, I'm gonna have to get back to, how do I get back to, let's just compare with standard light tank real fast. One other thing I wanna show you is for supply. So one standard light tank costs 16 supply and it costs 50, 20, 5, sorry, 525 for oil. I think that's only 5, 10, 5 for the dive bomber, but let's just check it. Remember, 16 is what it costs for the supply. Now let's go over the dive bombers, and they cost 30 for supply, and 5, 10, 5, just like I said. So they're a little cheaper on fuel, but they're basically twice as expensive on supply. Right now, I think supply is going to be the more important thing for me because my oil reserves are so high. I mean, I'm at 55,000. It's going to take a long time, and I will have a long time to react because it'll take so long for that to drain, I should have plenty of time to react to a depleting reserve by increasing my oil from level two to level three, which again, will take it up from 1,000 to 2,000. So I can basically double this number from 3,000 to 6,000. And I should even have this number at 4,000 right now if I hadn't lost the oil here. So I should be able to take this up from 4,000 to 8,000 if, uh, if things are really getting sketchy on the oil. Okay, so that concludes like kind of the overview, how everything's going. Let's start diving into the action. However, the action this turn, I have to say, is going to be pretty minor. All I want to do is kind of position some of these AT guns I got around. 
Um, we lost one AT gun here, but we didn't lose a horse. So let's just put one more AT gun back in there. And that's going to sure up the defense there. I also want to switch this machine gun unit into the city and pull this ranger unit back out into the plains. Because, you know, submachine guns defend worse in the plains and they defend better in the city. It's just a logical switch. I also want to make sure this one still has two. He does. Good. Now, where else do, are we thinking we might need um, anti-tank weapons? I'm looking and I want to make sure this line is well defended. So I'm considering these two points, which are still not very well defended. What I'm going to do is put two horses and two anti-tanks into this one. So we'll put two and two horses. Uh, this is kind of a jack of all trades unit, isn't it? It has mortar, rifle, machine gun, anti-tank, everything. But that's fine. It's it's defending a very critical corner, and it also is defending that critical corner against three hexes. So I, I feel that that's one of the most vulnerable. The other one, which I have now depleted um, all but one of my AT guns for, but that's fine. I'll still move one more in. Is this um, hex right here? I find that is probably the next most vulnerable to attack. So let's move an AT gun in there and give it a horse as well. And that concludes. Did we? Oh yes, we did. I was. Did we move enough horses around? But we we did because we were we lost one AT gun here, but we didn't lose the horse. So we should have an odd number of horses compared to um, anti tank guns now. And that's true to form. Now, after we were bombarded with this artillery, which I guess what we have is three artillery here, I'll probably bombard, bombard, and bombard. That's my that's my game plan. Um, it might even be wise for me to move. I don't think we're going to do any attacking this turn. So it might be advantageous to move this artillery forward a little bit so that he can bombard from different hexes next turn. Um, it might not even be necessary for me to bombard this hex just because it's mostly armored cars and we're not going to be doing very much against armored cars. So, okay, yeah, but I forgot. We're at the political points we need to build a factory, so let's do that next. And my whole spiel about this uh, debate, what to do, is that's we're choosing to build a, um, a tank factory. That means that for sure we're going to do um, light tanks next turn. So this is going to take 84 political points, which I don't have the political points for. Why do one first and then the other? It doesn't really matter. The reason I eventually came to the decision of having the factory built first and then researching it next turn is because this will give my engineers more time to recuperate their engineering points. But to be honest, we're not going to use the engineers. We're not likely to use the engineers for anything until for many turns until we have enough political points for another research path and another factory. So I don't think it'll be necessary. We could actually consider even building another tank factory. They're really... They're really not bad. Um, the vehicle factories are, are worthwhile. Since uh, you generally do need more tanks as the game goes on, eventually artillery and the gun factory will saturate because artillery and anti-tank guns, well, especially artillery, doesn't come under fire as much. However, on the flip side, artillery is very cheap, only eight supplies, no oil, and still, it's extremely effective for that supply room amount. So maybe we will just keep pumping out the artillery so that we can have... You know, maybe an artillery for every enemy hex. <laughs> That's uh, quite ambitious, but we'll see how the game progresses. Maybe we'll get to that point. Okay, so let's start with this artillery bombardment. I think I will bombard this one still using my headquarters one. And this is just... I mean, I don't really have very good options for bombardment here in the south. But I think that that's still the place that they're best served. So we maybe we killed five. Remember, my reconnaissance isn't spectacular here, so you're not exactly sure. Oh, well, if reconnaissance of 505, we, we can be pretty sure that this is the exact count. So we probably did get that just about right. And now I'm going to use one more political point. These are very limited, so I have to be a little careful about this, but um, this is going to be the headquarters, and I want to move, again, just the same thing I'm always doing, another four artillery and another four horses into that unit. So good. Now we have four, and next turn we'll get another two um, artillery and another four anti-tank guns. I'm going to keep that ratio being built for the time being. After a little bit of time, I might actually choose to upgrade the anti-tanks to all, to all eight. Just build all eight at a time. Um, but I don't have any artillery operating in my red in the eastern headquarters. I'd like to get some of that there. All right, so let's keep pushing on. I want to try to get two turns done this um, episode. So let's do an artillery attack here. Yes. Oh, very not effective. Hmm. Okay. A little bit at the very end there, but supposedly we killed five units. And the last one, I'm 
Okay, I'm not going to move this artillery up. Let's just get more effect out of it instead. So, this one should be pretty effective because artillery doesn't actually have a penalty attacking into marsh or swamp. Okay. Now, next thing I want to do is sure up this raw, which is can be a sac attack from three sides. Now, um, armor cars are not... They don't prefer to go into the low mountains, but they only suffer a 50% penalty. That's the same as forest or urban, and we've seen them attack there pretty successfully before. So let's just um, be a little bit careful, create another formation, which is unfortunate, but necessary. And let's just put 50 rangers in this and call this one a new special unit, a new special forces. Okay, and even though you're a little bit lower readiness, that added um, combat strength in the low mountains is going to be, I mean, this unit just entering there already has an entrenchment of 100, so we don't have to be too worried about that hex now. And that was the only weak point in this front, I would say. This one is still a little bit weak, but hey, now this artillery has had two turns to entrench itself in the fields, and the fields is better than the plains at least, so it should have a, a slightly better entrenchment, which will help it defend against... Uh, a massive armored car onslaught. We don't have any more anti-tank guns that can go there, so we're really, our hands are tied. <laughs> now, what can we do here? We can do a little bit of moving forward. I don't even think it's necessary for us to continue to defend this hex. Um, we could attack over the river, but that would give us, what, a 50% penalty? <clears throat> I mean, it would be helpful if we wanted to attack this hex to leave that open. Um, how are we doing anyways? 1.8. I don't like sending supplies to a unit that loses 25% of them. It's not the worst if it's only yellow. If it was 50% or 75%, I would definitely move them out. Yeah. Because we want to push um, some of our machine gun people forward. Let's see, we can move one of these guys into here. One of these guys can move here I guess. This guy can move here. I don't really know if this unit should stay there or move forward or what they should do. Again, this is the supply route, right? Even to connect, whoops, sorry, let's get the gray. So even to connect to this guy, we still go around the river. That's how severe the river penalty is. We'd rather go through a marsh here, a swamp, sorry, I always make that mistake. We want to go all the way off-road, three hexes, including one of the places being a marsh, then into another marsh, rather than going in uh, across this river. That just shows you how much worse it is to go across the river. So if we're cut off here, it's going to mean bad things for the supply of these guys, but then they can also just jump right back across the river. I don't think their unit would be able to, their armor car would be able to cross the river. I'm almost positive that... That would be, yeah, it's a 60 action point penalty to cross the river. So they definitely, the best they could do is get here. If they did that, I would just cut them off. So I think we're okay actually leaving the units exactly where they are. <clears throat> Again, it's really nice to defend in the marsh. It's really nice to defend in both of these swamps. And in fact, because this swamp is green, I'm actually just going to be a little crazy and move this unit into here. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us in the butt. If it does, we always have um, some extra rangers in here, which we can stop gap. In fact, because we're getting so many, okay, let's see. Right now, we're going to be at 180 next turn. What I wanted to try to get to was uh, the next upgrade for this is going to be like 180 or so. I want to get to that second upgrade very quickly because that'll allow me to not need to do a upgrade of existing units, which costs supply. So I'm just trying to min-max a little bit, save a little bit of supply by jumping directly to level 2. And then all the units I produce um, at the same cost will, will just immediately be level 2. If you wait a little while, then you have like maybe 20 units you need to upgrade from level 1 to level 2. And that will cost like 10 supply per. So I'm just trying to save myself like approximately 200 supply by jumping immediately to level 2. Which is why I've really strained my political point production. Um, if I look at production, you can see that I've basically cut off everything I'm doing except for political points, which could have a real detrimental effect on my combat ability. But I'm just building these 12 rangers, and I think of just a few machine guns, uh, some one bit of staff here and a few machine guns. In fact, I'm not even... Okay, it's not going to really help us, but I'll do this instead. 
we don't need the staff right now, so that's um, we'll take the extra political point. It's really min max. I know we're going crazy, but uh, if we can eke out just the level two uh, light tanks, then we can switch our production back over to some infantry. So, okay, good artillery's been done here. I don't think we have anything else we're going to do here. We're going to leave that pocket, which is a little weird. Oh, I guess I will just create this new unit and do the rangers immediately from it. This is also taken away from the potential rangers that can be streamed anywhere else, which is bad, but um, let's do it anyways. Okay, good. So that unit, we'll just put it here. It'll just be able to kind of defend against anything that happens in the next turn. It couldn't get here, which is where I would prefer it, but that's fine. On the next turn, I mean, they're not going to be able to take this point from me, which is means that they'll be held to the east side of the river. All right, moving forward. What do I want to do? Okay, so they've left this area open. I guess I'm going to go ahead and push forward both here and here. Again, this swamp is going to protect me against the armor because armor gets a 75% reduction against swamp, which means that um, it's really almost assures me a victory, especially crossing a stream. I mean, we can be fairly confident in success. I'm doing this just so I can attack this unit. They've also given this up to me. I can always pull back on the next turn if I absolutely have to. So let's go ahead and attack here with this unit. And no casualties, but we killed eight. Well, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And then this is a little bit crazy. I'm actually going to move into this forest to protect me. I couldn't, I didn't have enough action points to move back. So I'm actually going crazy. I'm moving forward instead. Now, how do I stop myself from being attacked? Well, um, that's a good question. I think we're going to have to cycle units up. So I think we'll take our lower morale unit here. We'll take our higher morale unit here. I guess it doesn't really matter. Move him there. And then we can filter this guy. I guess since there's no armor in the vicinity, let's double check that real fast. No armor. Now this stuff, the reconnaissance here 46 is not bad considering because we boosted it. So I guess, yeah, let's move this unit here. He's in fields, which is not good if we're attacked by armor, but because we're not being attacked by armor, I don't think there's any armor in range of us. We have one turn next. We should have a, a whole turn to react. Okay, no attacking here. Definitely, there's too much armor. And that leads us to this. Okay, good. Well, what do we do here? Um, yeah, we're going to move our armor forward and do some attacking. So let's move here. Um, let's move here. Let's move one of these ar uh, artilleries south, actually. I think we can move them here. We can actually bombard this hex. That seems like a wise idea because they're actually starting to amass a fairly sizable amount of inf infantry there. Let's see if we can uh, tone down their readiness at least. We only got four rounds in, which did not do much, but hey, something is still better than nothing. Now we can, and that's pretty good. We have pretty good reconnaissance on this hex, so we can be fairly assured that that drop below 100 was real. Okay, this unit can actually bombard something completely from where it's at. Oh, it only has 85 action points. Oh, no, but that's the horses, so the artillery has a full action points. <clears throat> Possibly really useful. We can move this guy forward as well. That costs 20. How should we do this? I think I made a mistake moving this unit here. Okay, I... Oh, if I want to attack this one with two of them, I didn't though. Okay, so let's attack this huge, very fortified hex. I'm gonna to have to bomb into the forest, which is a 50% penalty to my combat, but um, I this is such a strong hex for so many units that I think it's, I mean, we're still getting pretty good effect out of it. Not enough to really attack it though, huh? Hmm. Okay, well, we can probably attack these two though. So let's uh, use our this is interesting. Do I get 10 at 118 or do I get eight at 127? I think I'm gonna use the 127 here actually because I can use 10 rounds on the other one. Yeah, this is very effective. Okay, even though they're, yeah, we didn't end up actually um, killing that many. We didn't kill any in fact, but we lowered the readiness to zero. So that's, that's exactly what I want. Now we can get a full 10 rounds of artillery bombardment out of this one. 
Ah, take a drink in the during the combat. Here it is. And we this is very good. So we got ten rounds, lower them to five. Good. So I think they're both in perfect shape to be attacked. We'll attack with both of these guys into this hex, and we'll leave our machine gun there, and then we'll attack. Okay, actually. We should probably do this the other way. Yeah, I think I'm going to move my infantry in here. Okay, let's do it. I want to attack with this guy for sure, but who do I attack with instead? The question is, who will have the ability to follow up attack? This one has more action points, but he'll have more action points here too, I think. Let's just use the machine gun. Uh, no, no, no. No, yeah, let's use the infantry. Okay. I hope this works. Good. I The infantry didn't take any um, damage. That's good. Can he? The question being, can this guy... Good, he can still attack. That's what I was hoping. Okay, fantastic. So I can have this guy move into here if I want, which is good. That's, I mean, possibly something I definitely want. Let's do the attack on these two with, with these two guys now. This should be a, a walk in the park. Oh, we lost. Well, we lost a machine gun. That's a bummer. But killed seven. Nice and easy. And move that guy in there. I don't feel very threatened by this unit attacking here because I have some machine guns which are going to defend better. In fact, I'm actually just going to push a little bit further, put pressure on them. I don't mind if they try to cut me off here because these units have enough supply, two and two. So we'd be okay being cut off for two rounds, and if they did that, they would expose themselves. So they'd be losing their entrenchment, moving into planes where they wouldn't have as much defense against my artillery, yada yada. Lots of reasons why I would be happy. I'm inviting them to try to cut me off. Now, this unit can still attack in here, which I think I'm going to do. And then the only thing I have to be careful of is this armor car. It seems impossible for him to go all the way around and to attack any of my artillery. So we'll be okay where we are. Yeah, so we'll do it. We'll do this attack. Yeah, good. So we killed seven. We only lost one. And even more important, we took the Suburbans of Coutance. So we're really getting close now. This is it. The final push for Coutance. Once we take that, we can just fortify on these, these three hexes. I don't think their armor will be able to do anything to this high mountains. Can, can they even move? I actually don't know. Can armor move into high mountains? No, they can't. So that we can treat that as swamp. These are just impossible for armor, any kind of armor to move through. So if we defend these three hexes, we'll be assured of no armor crossing this area and we won't have to defend until over here. Now, if infantry come across here, it means that they'll basically be putting themselves severely out of supply because to cross through high mountains, I think it's extremely expensive for supply. Okay, I think that's everything we want to do for this turn, and I know it's already 28 minutes, but I'm going to try to pour, like, jump through this one as quickly as possible, so maybe we can get another turn done. I just want to make sure I didn't neglect anything that I wanted to do. My that's all good. Engineer's fine. Um, we could move... We could move this machine gun actually south, is there any threat of it, anybody pushing through and into York? I don't think so. It might be better for this one to actually reinforce this point. And we'll have the engineers. I know that that's not really what you want, engineers holding your city. Actually, we can move the ones from Bristol down since Bristol looks like it's in pretty safe condition now. Good, I like that. And we'll have this headquarters as kind of a backup. We can throw the staff into the meat grinder if we need to to hold Bristol. Okay, good. So I'll um, end the turn and... Let's see how the French and the Germans react to that. I'm sure there's a lot of going on for in the in the world map, but let's see if there's anything that happens. Uh, an attack? I didn't see where though. It looks like only one attack and... Huh. Oh, it wasn't against us. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's even better. So I'm not going to glow through this uh, like very slowly. I'm just going to kind of click through. Let's see what kind of stuff happened. Okay, this is the attack that I wanted to see. 
it was the Germans attacking, I'm sorry, the French attacking the Germans, and they were victorious. They killed a bunch of Germans, and the French took some decent losses themselves. That's good to see. Always good to see that and the two enemy units wearing each other out. Some more moving. I don't see too much moving around um, Coutances, though, which is good. Okay, they're kind of starting to come around the south, but I'm not, I'm not afraid about that yet. Unless they get outside the suburbs, we're just gonna kind of let them be. So, okay. All right, so we have more anti-tank guns to deal with now as well, but we do have two anti-tank guns in pretty good position, and we've been bombarding these guys to try to keep their infantry low. We can continue to do that. Plenty of, oh, it looks like they used some kind of attack thing. I wonder if that's preemptive or... Hmm. Also very interesting, they've left staff and infantry just alone. I think I'm gonna take advantage of that and actually attack. Um, there's no way my, yeah, my artillery could get close. It would be at some small, it would cost them, they would only be able to bombard four, four times. If you're gonna attack, you usually do wanna, you know, have artillery start things off. And killing 31 staff, they're at 11 readiness. That's just asking to be destroyed. Oh my gosh. Uh, hmm. Is it strong enough? Yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's move in. This is not what I originally planned, but we'll do it anyway. Mainly, this is just not to kill. This is mainly to prep for the attack. So now with that attack, I think I can attack this unit. I think I'm just gonna attack with the Rangers. Rangers lead the way. Okay, good. So I think this was a pretty wise decision, 20 to four overall. And staff aren't any cheaper, well, than normal infantry. I guess they are cheaper than my Rangers, but, and move in there, we will definitely not. So that's, that concludes that. The rest of the bombardment, we can probably just stick to bombarding this hex and 17 to 18 versus 27. Uh, it's hard to say which is better to do. I mean, I guess we should bombard this hex because the engineers don't matter as much. So let's bombard this one. That's the more important one because this is one we could actually consider taking. It'd be nice because um, the tanks can't attack it, which is nice. We didn't really do that much, though, did we? No. And then we'll attack this one because, yeah, this is the biggest threat. Just, oh, I mean, if we happen to kill an armored car, that's icing on the cake, but this is mainly what we're going to look for is those infantry. Okay, so that consumes all the action points of our artillery down here. Technically, we do have another two artillery sitting here. Eh, okay, well, I mean, since they're there, we might as well use them, right? I guess let's double up on the assault here because that's where I would prefer to inflict a few more casualties. And again, artillery doesn't have any penalty attacking into uh, the swamps. I mean, if that's true, if we actually did kill another three units, it's, it's great. Okay, we've got to make sure we don't end this episode too late. 35 minutes already, huh? Incredible. Incredible. All right, I feel good about this. I feel good about these guys. Yeah, I guess this is the main story, isn't it? How to get into Coutances. Well, they didn't fall for the trap, so they didn't move out. We still have two artillery who are in range to attack this guy. And we actually have two artillery who can move up and attack this guy. That's, I think, exactly what we're going to do. It's only going to take two of their ten artillery bombardment cycles, so they can still get eight in. Let's just do it immediately. That would be That would be great. I really think eight artillery for eight rounds is gonna it's gonna be yeah incredibly useful. That was incredibly useful. I think we're in a position to attack these guys actually. Um, how would we do this? I think we just attack with all right. Yeah, is there any reason why not to? Hmm. This guy, by the way, he's technically um, in yellow. I can tell 1.7. I was just kind of 
counting it out to myself. Well, that's probably one too far, but that's okay. <laughs> he was yellow for one turn. Now we're getting a 60% concentric bonus because he's over there. So that's nice. And he didn't lose action points moving there on this turn. So it was to our benefit to have him over there. Um, yeah, I guess let's just do it. I, I don't see any, re any reason why we shouldn't. Okay, so we lost one unit and we were able to kill 29. That's good. That's very good. Especially because the truck and the infantry gun are way more expensive than normal infantry, but they both have to be, well, I guess the infantry gun doesn't, but the trucks have to be produced from your normal cities. Great, so who moves in there? Probably just this guy, so that we hold this front and we're in position to do another attack on this guy. We can get him from five sides. Let's follow, I mean, let's proceed any, even the idea of an attack with bombardment. And this is 10 rounds of eight artillery, so it should be even more effective. Although it is in the forest, was the other one in the forest? I'm, I don't think so, actually. So we can see the difference that the better units, the better artillery units bombarding for longer were still far less effective than they were against the field's hex. That's the minus 50% penalty coming in. Is it still worth attacking? I, I think so. I mean, it's just going to eliminate the units from being a hassle. I want these units on the front. There's lots of reasons why I think it's a good idea to still attack. So let's go ahead and cross our fingers and do it. We are getting an 80% concentric bonus. We're way, well below the attack stack. These are all good things. So here we go. We definitely took a few casualties. Five, eight. We took eight overall and they lost about 60. So I guess this was definitely worth it. Yeah, that was definitely worth it. Okay, I felt a little bad when I saw my casualties, but I wasn't paying good attention to their casualties, which were <laughs> far worse, far worse than ours. Okay, now the question is, where should we move people from here? This machine gun, I would like to get somebody here. It doesn't look like anybody can actually move there, huh? Hmm. If I hadn't moved this infantry in, he would have been able to move there. That was silly. I just don't want anybody to sneak around and attack my artillery. They're a little vulnerable. But seeing as we're already in this position, what we can do is move both of these guys forward, actually, and then move this unit. Ah, that did not work. I thought that he would have the action points to move out, but he's already attacked twice, so of course he doesn't have the action points to move. Yeah, that makes sense. Well... I guess we hold the line like this then. There's nothing else we can do. Definitely we want to hold the forest Texas, so. Well, that's good in the north. Let's see if there's anything else we want to do. Okay, so they've started to bring, uh, okay, they don't have any, they don't have any armor units that can attack this unit though. I don't think that he has the ability to move here and then attack, so he'll be moving through my zone of control. And that's just gonna add 10 to his movement cost. He also has to cross a stream here, so I really don't think that this Armored car is capable of attacking this unit, which is the biggest threat I, I see. Um, do any reds want to attack? I don't think so. I think we might actually be fine holding static lines this time. I'm happy we got the anti-tank guns here. This is probably the weakest pot, but at least it's going to require and they can only attack from one spot, so it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, this is the weak point, but we did put those AT guns up. They only have a readiness of 55, but uh, at least their entrenchment has gone up, so I'm happy enough with that. We do have some more anti-tank guns, four more, that we can deliver. Where, where should these go? Oh, okay, yeah, and of course, because we have this, which is not producing anything, the first thing we need to do is make sure we buy the light tanks and then make sure that we are now producing them. Okay, good. So now next turn we'll get four standard light tanks. Those will arrive on the gray headquarters and probably we'll push them immediately into service down here. In fact, preemptively what we can do is I like to have my tanks right around with, um, I mean, I like to have my infantry right around on top of the tanks. So let's just get 10 machine guns and preemptively put them into a what is going to be an actually an armor, um, an armored unit. Now to transfer the armored out, it's going to cause a small, a 75% readiness penalty, 
But considering the machine guns will be back to full, I'm going to be pretty confident attacking... Well, that is quite a few armored cars. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to wait one more turn. Um, anyway, it's still conceivable that we'll be able to attack next turn with our uh, with our light tanks because we could also move into this raw and attack into the planes here if they only have nine armor cars there. There's some options, I think. We'll, we'll play around with it when we get there. But since this video's gone on to 40 minutes already... Uh, no, starting in the south. Is there any... Okay, so this is where we have to think about doing stuff. I think we're okay not attacking yet. That is certainly a very vulnerable target. We need to get some artillery up to the red. Okay, so you have only two artillery now. Let's just transfer those two artillery over to this unit. Yeah. We used them already, so we're not losing any of the action points or stuff, but they are not going to have the same number of action points or readiness next turn. Um, so it's a, it's a small hit. What we could do actually is switch over this to this headquarters, which means that the new ones that come there won't suffer the action point penalty. And I think that this gray unit is actually okay as far as having enough anti-tank guns for the time being. Yeah, because we have the two here and we have the two here, which are holding down the main, the two vulnerable spots along the line. Okay, so that's good. Any other creation of units or anything we need to do with this guy? I don't think so. Staff is at 124. Staff 139. Just checking all these guys. Staff 126. Yeah, we're good on all those. Um, this guy still doesn't have enough trucks, so let's actually transfer a few more trucks up to him. This one's holding on to 13 trucks. So let's get three more trucks up there. Good. So now that he has uh, seven trucks instead of four, that'll help him with his transfers. Although he has fully, oh, well, I mean, this unit took a few casualties, but this unit was otherwise fully supplied at the beginning of the turn. All right, so I don't think we need to do anything else. I think the static lines, we're just going to hold them here. So let's uh, cross our fingers, knock on wood, and <laughs> hit next turn. Oh, one thing, I just want to make sure we have uh, supply, stockpile. Good, so we're, we, it was probably around 10,000, and now we're down to 7,500. So we can only do this political point crank for one more turn, which is exactly what we need in order to get light tank two. We only need 168 actually. So after this, we'll be able to cut back pretty severely on political point production. Good. Let's end turn and see what our foes have in store for us. Hmm. I'm excited. We can take coutons very quickly. Okay, there was an attack. It looks like we held. Attack, it looks like we held. Another attack, we held. Oh, they have the corner piece. I reinforced it with um, anti-tank. Um, okay. I think we were just attacked. It doesn't look like, with 18 losses, I don't think we lost any of the battles. Dwight Eisenvalue is up to level four, incredible. So he's got another 2% morale, 3%, oh, 2% combat, 3% morale, and another 50 staff points, which just means another five. And he gives an artillery attack bonus of up to 20%. Yeah, we got to get you some artillery. I think we finally did just <laughs> this turn. Finally, he has some artillery. Good. So look at that. The four artillery is at 92 readiness and 96 action points. That's actually pretty effective. I mean, that's that's good. That's something we can work with. Um, okay, so let's see what happened. Let's go to the history, and then we'll have to call it for this turn. But I am very excited. I'll probably just re record the next episode right away. It's, um, it's exciting. Okay, so they attacked this corner unit. We held firm. They killed four rifles and a mortar, but they lost 30 rifles and four armored cars. Wow, four armored cars, oh my gosh. They had 11 though. So they, yeah, well, that's the point, right? Hold the forest. We started playing smart. Advanced tactics, you know, you have to use tactics. <laughs> okay, they, they attacked this um, suburban hex. Not at all um, surprising. A very smart attack. They really, they should be trying to take that back. However, it doesn't look like they were able to succeed, even though they attacked with like three to one odds. They lost about 50 rifles, which is really going to make them a lot weaker for me to follow up. Okay, then after that, so moving forward, I saw the other attack. They attacked that corner hex, and that was... We lost eight rifles, but they lost an armor car, 27 rifles, and an infantry gun. 
So very good. I'm glad that we had the AT guns there. I'm not sure if they really did much. Uh, they attacked with six armor cars. So yeah, they probably did something. Okay, then they moved some units around. We'll have to watch out here. I don't... Their armor cars seem to have shifted back entirely. Oh. This unit here is troublesome, though. It's an armor car unit approaching. And I do have a breach st clear through to my artillery, so I'll have to close that. All right. And now on to the Germans. They moved some armor cars back, some armor cars around. They're shifting around. Why didn't... Oh, I did the attack. That's right. But we didn't move forward, and they smartly did not move their staff forward. But no attacks from them. Okay, good. So it looks like we have our, our work cut out for us in the next turn. It's pretty apparent what we need to do. Nothing really in the south. I mean, we'll probably keep doing those follow-up attacks. It looks like this unit is actually vulnerable enough that we can move in. I'm um, just making sure. I'm pretty sure that... How much does it cost to move into Marsh? From 93 to 128. Someone do my 35? Is that 35? Yeah, 35. So it costs 35 to move into Marsh. That's really not that bad. It should be a lot worse in my opinion. Um, but Crossing River is just... just You can't do it. Anyway, so that means it'll only cost an additional 35 to move to this hex if we grab it. And since it's surrounded on three sides, I think that's a... I mean, it seems to be a sensible decision. We can attack it and take that one. Especially because they're very low. We've been bombarding the heck out of them. They might be a bit out of supply. I think two more using two artillery to bombard this guy is just going to you know, make it a, a sure thing. Um, let's scroll a little bit north. I like that the Germans and French are kind of fighting over here. I have no reason to try to push out from Oxford. If I do a push, I'd like to come in, to come in the south towards Fishhawk because that's going to capture the oil for me as well. So because we're in the stalemate here, I don't have any desire to push out here. Well, let's, let's let the Germans and French fight. Then moving north... I mean, this is a prime target for an artillery bombardment, though. And eventually, because we surround it by four sides, even though we have a stream penalty, surrounding it by four sides just means, I think at some point, that we should attack. Um, this one is also four sides, but much, I would say, less likely to be attacked. No armor threatening this area still. This one is definitely going to be our artillery bombardment target. And looks like they're just kind of shifting their armor north. Now, they have attacked with the armor, which does definitely weaken it, right? They are losing armor cars. I'm not sure. Oh, well, they built a factory right here. For the love of God, there's two and just like <laughs> a stone's throw from the other. Which, hey, that's good for me. Eventually, we know that we won't need another tank factory because we'll just be taking them over theirs. Coutants were so close. Can smell it. Can taste it. Can taste the French wine. <laughs> Ah, yes. A bit of a problem here, but I think that the French got themselves a little cut off from Coutance. They focused probably a little too strongly south. We should be able to take it. I'm not sure we can take it this turn, but we can do some very strong artillery bombardment, even starting with this turn. I'm guessing the best way to do this is actually going to move the artillery forward and attack this hex instead, which we can get four sides. I think I'm guessing this is going to be four sides of surroundment on this one maybe even five, and then we just slowly creep in and do the same thing to Coutance. At least get three or four sides of surroundment before just uh, siege things down, slow. All right, well, this has almost been an hour-long episode, but I've been quite happy with it. I think things have been actually moving forward at a pretty quick pace, despite the fact that it's been a 50-minute episode. So. so thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one, where I think we can actually begin our siege of Coutance. Thanks for watching. Take care.